Welcome back to the show, everybody. Welcome back, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be reacting to the Augustine Ramos live stream that went down on his channel last night. I did sit through that whole live stream. Now, luckily, I had about four and a half, five hours left on my clock when he started the thing. And he went for like five hours and 40 minutes, I think. And uh, he got extremely sidetracked. Uh, extremely sidetracked on a number of occasions but it was a really good live stream I suggest you guys go check it out if you're interested in trucking if you're interested in Augustine Ramos if you're interested in youtuber drama it, it was it should have been it, it's a live stream called people are talking about me or truckers are talking about me or YouTube you know what I don't want to do the man at disservice let me look it up it's called, There's Videos Being Made About Me. And then and then in the title, and then in the title, it's got, I'm Anthony TV, it's got Mr. By the Mile, and it's got yours, yours truly, baby, yours truly, in the title. So, he was reacting to videos that we did about him. All in good fun, all in good, listen, let me, let me clear things up about my, uh, my, opinion about Augustine Ramos. The guy is extremely talented and with video making and storytelling and narration. Um, do I think, do I think at 31 years old, he should be a little smarter in everything? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, but you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I just think I understand his goals. Uh, him and I are very, very much alike. Uh, you guys from my old channel will remember I got into trucking. I became an owner operator in like two years after getting my license. I ran my own truck for nine months. Things went well and then things went bad all because pretty much because of my own decisions, not because of the market or not because of brokers, nothing like that because of my own decisions. And then I, uh, I quit trucking for five months and got a local trucking job that only paid me about 680 take home a week 680 take home a week take home and then on the side i was building a junk removal company um but although the junk removal company did do was starting to do decent uh i tr i started a junk removal company in the middle of winter right if you could believe that in the middle of winter and it was actually doing okay except i was looking at all my credit card debt and i was like okay if i build this junk removal company and i live off this local job how long is it going to take for me to pay off my debt and when i did the math i realized i was going to be paying ungodly amounts of interest on top of that credit card debt and I was just like, there's no way. I mean, I'll, I was like sixty-five or sixty-six thousand dollars in debt. I am. I have about. Let me do some quick math. I got about eighteen thousand dollars in credit card debt to go. Maybe, maybe it's a little less than that. Uh, and that will be paid off hopefully in the next nine months, nine months. So if you want to round it up to the rest of this year, I was OTR all 2023 and I was OTR. I'm going to be OTR all 2024. If you want to round it up to 12 more months to pay off all this debt, it take, it took me to, it, it will take me as long as nothing drastic happens. It will take me two years to pay off about 66,000, I don't know the exact number, somewhere between 65 and $67,000 is what I had when I came in here. So, and that looks like it's all gonna be paid off by the end of this year, two years. And that includes, I moved from Kingman, Arizona where I was doing the junk removal company and I was working for a local roofing company as a driver. I moved to Phoenix and so the, my cost of living almost double. Actually, it did double. It did double from 
Kingman and Phoenix. So if that puts any if that puts anything into perspective for you, it puts this into perspective that there is money to be made in trucking, in over the road trucking, but I'm going to get to Augustine's point. I understand what Augustine says. He says, when I count all the hours I'm in the truck, blah, 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 blah. We're going to get to that in a minute. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about the eight to $12 an hour or whatever I make while I'm out here on the road. But so my point is I live in the King. I live, I live in the Phoenix Metro area. Now I do not live in Phoenix. I live in surprise Arizona. So that if anybody knows anything about Surprise, it's not cheap to live there. Uh, was it was it a good decision to move there? Uh, no, not financially, but I I got a job out of Phoenix that was the perfect job for what I was looking to do. And every time I had my home time, I had to drive three hours to King, three and a half hours to Kingman to get home. It's about a three hour drive, but you know you got to stop and grab snacks and take a piss and all that shit. So. Uh, I didn't want to, every three weeks when I was coming home for home time, I did not want to, um, drive to Kingman. Um, on top of that, every week, pretty much every eight days, I swing through Phoenix. So if I was living in Phoenix, cause I get about, I get about half a day off maybe every eight days. And, and obviously half a day off is, is not enough time to drive to Kingman and back to Phoenix. Right? So another reason I moved to Phoenix was, I wanted to go home every eight days for that half day or that one night, that night I get to spend at the house. So now that you know the backstory, I want you to know that I believe everything Augustine says about trucking. Um, because I've started four or five businesses in the last six years. Um, I've started, closed all of them down in the last five or six years. Um, except, I mean, the junk removal company is still legit. It's still, it's still all legit LLC and business licenses and all that stuff. But I'm not doing any work in Phoenix at the moment because I run my face off with this company. Now, what's crazy is a year after I did my Google my business listing in Kingman for junk removal, I'm coming up on the first page of Google out there. And it's like super frustrating because now I have to pretty much restart that whole process in the Phoenix area. So, but it, it took me, it took me, uh, what month is this? Yeah. It took me about a year, maybe 13 months. Somebody just called me last week and I said, yeah, I'm sorry. We, we moved the business to Phoenix. And they were like, Oh, okay. Thanks. I said, how'd you hear about us? And she said, oh, I just Googled junk removal Kingman and you were on the first page. I was like, man, that is an accomplishment, especially for, I have i haven't posted any pictures on that Google My Business for like a year. I only post about five pictures up there and I never touched it again. So that's pretty uh, exciting to know that I could, yes, it takes about nine months to a year. Now, if I posted regularly on my Google, my business for that junk removal company, if I posted more often and I got more reviews on there, I believe I would have came up in the algorithm probably at the three to six month mark instead. So, oh, I had to drink some water. So back to Augustine Ramos. Augustine Ramos likes to do things like this. Let's say I make $1,800 a week, gross. For hypotheticals, that's how much I make. How much I really make, nobody's gonna know yet because I still owe bills, you know what I mean? We don't want those pocket watchers being able to uh, get up in front of a court and say, I testify, blah, 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 right? No, I'm paying off all my debt. I'm not in court. I'm just, I'm just fucking around about that, but, um, I'm not in court. I'm not being sued yet. <laughs> I am uh, settling a couple things out of court that were about to go to court for collections. I'm also uh, just grinding on my regular credit card. I have one credit card that I'm paying off that was going to be a lawsuit and I was going to be taken to court, but I called the collection agency and I set up a payment plan on that first. So yeah, we're, we're all good there. And, uh, 
and then I'm just grinding and uh, I'm uh, I've got I've got three credit cards I've got one big balance left and I've got two little balances left <laughs> but I'm chunking down I'm chunking down the big balances first to get rid of those because those are the balances I'm paying the most interest on. I know a lot of people will say, pay off the smaller credit cards first and then use that money to pay off the big credit cards. But see, here's the thing. I'm only paying $100 a month to my little credit card uh, for the minimum payment and the balance is so small that the interest is not super outrageous. So that $100 being put towards the bigger credit card wouldn't make a whole lot of sense in my situation, in my situation. I don't know about your situation, but in my situation, I'm chunking down the big card. Like let's say for instance, there was $11,000 on that credit card. I'm chunking $1,000 a paycheck. Boom, 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 right? Until that card's paid off. And then as soon as that card's paid off, then it's $1,000 a paycheck to the next littlest card and then the next littlest card. That's how I'm doing it. That's not necessarily how you should do it. So for shits and giggles, let's say it's fairly easy to come out here and make $1,800 a week gross. Not with a mega carrier. Now, can you make $1,800 a week with a mega carrier? Absolutely. You probably have to be there for about 10 years though. So you're probably asking, how do I make $1,800 with with, with no experience. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this really quick. Get your experience wherever wherever you can get your experience. Get one year in. And at the one year mark, start calling around to these little companies. And I know people say mom and pop companies are not the way to go. Uh, some of them are definitely not the way to go. But that's like saying mega carriers aren't the way to go, right? Some mega carriers are the way to go depending on what you're goals are with the business, right? For for my for my situation, I'm looking for one thing. I'm looking for money and miles. Right? I've got a average pay per mile, but I get 3300 miles a week, okay? Most mega carriers aren't going to give you 3300 miles a week. But that's where you got to find the company that suits you for what you're doing. Now, is there a lot of risk with the tiny company? Do they have less money in the bank? Do they have less trucks? Do they have a truck to, to give you if your truck breaks down? You know, yeah, there's a lot of risk involved in a small mom and pop company. But the one good thing about a mom and pop company, let's say, when I say when I say mom and pop, I'm, I'm talking about anywhere from 10 trucks, eight trucks, because you need some kind of stability, right? Some kind of stability. So. I'm saying eight trucks to 30 trucks. That's what I'm talking about, mom and pop. Eight to 30 trucks, okay? One of the great things about a mom and pop company is they need that truck on the road rolling, pulling freight, just as much as you do for your paycheck. That's if you're out here trying to get money. If you're out here trying to run 2,200 miles a week, the mom and pop companies are not usually, usually not for you. Usually they're not for you because those mom and pop companies need to run you to death so they could stay afloat. You know what I mean? All right. Back to Augustine. Augustine says a warehouse worker is making more than a truck driver per hour spent on the job. Yes. I agree with Augustine. If you are in that truck, you are at work. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're taking a 34 on the road or you're taking a 10 hour break on the road, you are at work. So in that sense, I agree with Augustine and that would be 24 hours a day times seven days a week. You're on the road 168 hours a week. So technically you are at work 168 hours a week. Now let's take 1800 a week gross divided by 168 hours. I might make, might make $1,800 a week. So I might make 1071 
an hour. I make 1071 an hour, okay? So in that sense, Taco Bell makes more money than I do. The people that are cleaning your showers at the TA and the Petro, they are making more money than I do per hour, right? But $1,800. So how can they make, let's say, let's say they make 14 bucks an hour. Let's say 15 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour. That's what the going rate is in a lot of these metro areas um, for anything. Starting warehouse worker, 15 bucks. Uh, McDonald's, 15 bucks. Uh, tire change rate, discount tire warehouse, 15 bucks, right? So in order to make $1,800 a week, how much do you have to, how many hours do you have to work at 15 hours? Let's see. So, uh, 1800. Well, first and foremost, we're going to talk overtime, right? We got to be fair. We got to make this apples to apples, right? If you're working at a Taco Bell, you're going to get paid time and a half for overtime. Now, I don't know any Taco Bell that's going to give you fucking 60, 70 hours a week. I don't think it's going to happen. They don't like to pay time and a half. Uh, but let's just say you found a warehouse gig that paid $15 an hour and they paid overtime and they had some overtime hours. This is how much you would have to run or you would have to run. Yeah, run around the warehouse. 15 bucks times 40. Okay, we're looking at, uh, let me get a pad and paper. Truckers, always be prepared with your pad and paper. Augustine, always be prepared with your pad and paper. This way you don't need to write in the comment section. You don't have to use the comment section of your laptop, of your YouTube channel, to be to, to take notes, right? Be prepared, Augustine. Truckers, I love these. They're about $6, I think, at every single truck stop you go to, okay? They're about six bucks. I don't buy them anymore. The first couple, four years ago, I bought them with my cash, my own money. But after that, it's fuel points, baby. Fuel points. If you're a new trucker, remember, when you sign up for fuel loyalty points for the, for the truck stops that your trucking company has you fuel up at, every time you get, let's say, half a tank of fuel, every time I get half a tank of fuel, I think I make five bucks in points. I think it's five bucks. Yeah, every every six hundred dollars I spend is about five or six dollars. So I don't never pay for anything like this right now. Actually, uh, starting this week, I'm really saving up my money because um, I got a couple things in mind that I want to buy from the truck stop that are going to be like four or five hundred bucks. We'll talk about that later. So first and foremost. How much does a Taco Bell or a warehouse employee employee have to make, or how many hours do they have to work to make my $1,800? Okay. My hypothetical $1,800. <clears throat> so 40 hours um, is going to put them at 600 bucks. Okay. 40 times 15 is, that, is 600. So 1,800 minus 600. All right, we have $1,200 to go. And I'll tell you how I'm going to figure that out in a minute. First thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to figure out what is time and a half. 15 times 1.5. So at they're making 2250. 2250 overtime. Okay, how many hours of overtime do I have to make the balance? Because remember, 40 hours a week times $15 an hour, he made $600. So now we need another $1,200 to make my hypothetical weekly paycheck. Okay, now how are we gonna get that? I'm gonna take the $1,200 that we need to make and I'm gonna divide it by 2250 and that's how many overtime hours he's gonna have to work. All right, so we're going to go 1,200 divided by 2,250 
he needs to work or she needs to work 53.3 hours. 53.3 hours. 53.3 hours. Now, we're not talking about jobs. I'm going to get to why I'm talking about $15 an hour for now. For now. And then we could talk about your mom's friend's boyfriend who makes $80 an hour. Okay, that's different. <clears throat> so, the average worker with no skills, because remember, most people are going to get into trucking because they don't have any skills that can make them the money that trucking makes them, okay? So, let's say you, you worked at a warehouse. Let's say you worked at, uh, you were a tire change guy. Let's say you were an oil change guy at Jiffy Lube. You make 15 bucks an hour, you're like, I'm gonna go get my CDL and I'm gonna drive trucks and I'm gonna make more than I make now. Well, Augustine Ramos is gonna have you believing you're not gonna make any more money than you already make at the warehouse. But you will. Hourly, you will not make any more money. He is right. You are gonna make less money per hour, okay? Per hour. But now we're trying to figure out what you gotta work to make $1,800 a week. You need 53.3. 53.3 hours of overtime alone. Okay? Plus 40 hour regular work week. Okay, you're looking at 93.33 hours. 93.33 hours equals $1,800 gross. So, 93 hours. We're just going to round it down to 90, 93. 93 hours divided by seven days a week. That is 13.28 hours in your warehouse. Let's just round it to a little up. 13 and a half. 13. No, I'm sorry. 13.3. 13.3 hours. 13.3 hours. Seven days a week. First of all, nobody is going to be able to work 13 hours a day, seven days a week in a warehouse for more than a couple weeks. You might be able to do a couple weeks like that and then you're burnt out. You got to take a week off. Do another two weeks, take a week off. Do another two, three weeks, take another few days off. My point is, you are not going to be able to keep up that pace. Are there people that make more money than truckers at Taco Bell, at McDonald's? Absolutely. Do they make more money gross per week per, cha per, per paycheck? If we're not talking about the hours spent to make as much as I do at a regular job at home, you have to work 13 Point three hours a day, seven days a week, every week of the year. Every week of the year. Let me let me tell you what I've hypothetically grossed, because my tax returns are getting re are getting ready uh, prepared right now. I made seventeen eighty three, supposedly seventeen eighty three. For the first ten months, I worked this job. Because I worked this job, this particular job with this company, 10 months straight. I, I didn't I didn't take more than one day a week off. One day. If you average, if you take all the time I took off and you averaged it out for the uh for the 40 something weeks, 48 weeks, whatever it is, for the 10 months, if you averaged it out, I took off one day a week. Okay, so I ran hard. But tell me this. Do you know anybody that could go work at a discount tire warehouse and bust tires for 13.3 hours a day, seven days a week for 10 months straight? Because remember, I got a day off every week. I averaged one day off. I took a week off to move. I took off uh, two or three days to go to the river. I took off two days to go to Lake Pleasant. Um, 
I took off a day here, a day there, a day here, a day there. I took off a day to go to the uh, doctor. So if you average it out, I think it might even be more. I might have even, even got one and a half days off uh, per week if you average it out for the whole 10 days or 10 months. So I, as the truck driver, supposedly made 1783 a week average. Um, now I, I'm averaging that out. That means some weeks I made 1400 and other weeks I made 22, 2300. 1783 average. I made 1783 average supposedly according to this hypothetical story. So again, who do you know locally that gets to sleep in their own bed every night? Because that's the, that's the flex, right? Oh, I sleep in my own bed every night next to my lady. I'm not talking about food service. I'm not talking about a local union position that it took you three months to become full time and you were eating shit for three months and you weren't even making a paycheck for three months. I'm talking about quitting trucking because Taco Bell employees or warehouse workers in Walmart, Wal Augustine, remember the Walmart warehouse worker you said made more than me? He makes more than, or she makes more than me hourly, but she will almost never make more than me weekly. Never. Now, I understand being in this truck sucks, but I am making... $10, what did I say? $10.77? $10.77, I think. Per hour, every hour I'm in this truck. I don't have to work for my, my $10.70 most of the time. Most of the time, well, no, I take that back. Let me see, 70 hours a week. Hold on, because I run recaps. So I run my whole 70 out all the time. I've never taken a 34 hour reset unless I asked for time off at the house. That's how tight of a ship this company runs. Now, not all companies can run that because not all, you know, a company that has quote unquote dedicated freight. We don't have dedicated freight per se, but we have, we run the same freight all the time for the same customers all the time. So we know our schedules. We know where we're going 80% of the time. We're going to the same locations. So I can run recaps. So 168 hours minus 70 hours. So yeah, 98 hours of my time spent in this truck that I'm getting quote unquote paid 1077 for. Uh, 90, 98 hours. I'm, the majority of my time out here on the road is spent sleeping, making YouTube videos, watching YouTube, eating, using the bathroom, showering. Now I know I'm not at home. I know I'm, I'm still at work, but the point is I'm getting paid 1077 in your words, Augustine, I'm getting paid 1077 or whatever it was, 1071 to do nothing. I'm getting paid 1070 to wash my floor, which I just, I just scrubbed my floor in my truck today. I got paid 1070, 70, let, that's bothering me. Let me figure it out what it is. One, eight hundred. I'm so OCD, uh. Uh, 1800 divided by 168 hours, 1071. I'm going to write that down. I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget all the money I make, Augustine. 1071. I'm making a whopping 1071 an hour to run my mouth on the internet. I love it. I'm getting paid. I'm a paid YouTuber. I just, it, that just dawned on me, guys. I am a professional YouTuber because I'm getting paid 1071 an hour to run my mouth and post it on YouTube. Oh. oh, and my mom said I'd never make it as a YouTuber. Oh my God. I'm gonna have to text her and tell her. Oh, oh I can't, she's dead, but. <laughs> she really is dead, but it's been 10 years, so. Anyway, uh, we can laugh about it now. She would probably think that was funny too. So. Not to kill the mood here. Not to kill the mood here. We're just talking about unskilled. Unskilled people. You're only going to make $15 an hour. So to make what I make, hypothetically, you're going to have to work 93.33 hours a week. You are never going to be home. And when you are home, you're going to be doing your 10-hour break from your warehouse job. <laughs> so 
You got to change your perspective. Augustine, change your perspective. Listen, I hope you make it, Augustine. I hope you make it. But I, I, I made a comment, and I'm not sure if you read the comment or not. I said, listen, Oakland is falling apart at the seams. Everybody wants to see what's happening in Oakland. The mainstream news is covering Oakland. But people want to see somebody on the ground like yourself who actually lives there and can walk around there and can show us both sides of the story. I told you, if listen, just like you didn't want to grind in trucking to make a lot of money, you're not really grinding in YouTube. I understand it takes a long time to edit a video the way you edit those videos, okay? And your, your, your videos are beautifully edited. Don't get me wrong. They are excited. They keep me hooked. They make me want to watch all the way to the end. But let me give you a tip. Two years ago, three years ago, I lived in Vegas and I was a Vegas vlogger. And that's one of the reasons that my old channel got so big is the Vegas content that I put out. It was also called Tommy Unfiltered and it was mostly Vegas content. And then it switched to mostly May Trucking Company content. Um, and, and the reason I deleted it, a lot of people are asking me, why'd you delete your own channel? I was up to 4,800 subscribers. My audience was way too fragmented. I had, because I started it back in Colorado when I was doing eBay sales. So I had subscribers that were there for eBay. I had subscribers that were there for my moving company in Colorado. I had subscribers that I gained uh, for the Vegas vlogs. I had subscribers there just for May trucking content. Then I had subscribers there for my flatbedding content. Then I picked up subscribers based on my owner operator content. And then I started getting some subscribers because of uh, talking uh, talking about just trucking the other YouTuber. I, I got a lot of subscribers from that. And then I got subscribers for my junk removal content. And then I was getting subscribers for my pressure washing content. See, Augustine, I've been all over the place like you, bro. I have dreams just like you. I think trucking is a disgusting industry just like you. Except... It is a tool to get you the money that you will not get doing anything else with our skill set, with the with the little little bit of work that we do. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a hard job when you're driving the truck. But when you ain't driving the truck, you got the you know you got the pick of the litter or whatever you want to do around the truck. Now, I understand you can't leave the truck. I understand that. But my point is, yes, it's dangerous. Yes. People could pull out in front of you. Yes, you could ruin your career. Yes, you could end up in prison if you're an idiot out here. Um, all that is true, Augustine. All that is true. As a matter of fact, I wish I'm going to go back and find... I think I'm going to go back from last year or two summers ago. Two summers ago. I'm going to go back and find the video I had on my old YouTube channel about when I parked my truck that I owned. I was an owner-operator. I parked my truck and why I parked it. And a lot of the reasons are the same reasons you listed. Yes, driving in the winter, driving in the ice, the risk, the risk versus the reward, right? So what did I do? I took five months off. I decompressed. I got a break from the road. I found a company who never runs in the mountains during the winter. I go to the Midwest Real quick, real quick, real quick. There's a guy and a girl. He's a trucker and she's riding with him for some reason. She's just riding with him. She's so pretty and all dolled up and fancy, clean, nice clothes. And I'm wondering how long she's going to spend in the truck with him. Because uh, she ain't going to look like that in six months. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, listen. Here's I found a company that doesn't run in the snow. Well, we do run in the snow, but we don't run the Colorado Rockies. We don't run the Northwest at all. We go East, West, East, West. Uh, the most snow I've been in is, um, uh, New York, uh, Chicago, obviously, but, uh, all through there, uh, I've been in a, I was in a pretty bad ice storm two weeks ago in Missouri and, and Oklahoma. Yeah, that was scary. That was brutal. But does that happen every week? Like, like running the Rockies every week, you're going to have to chain up. I know because I did it for my first three winters with my license. So 
No, uh, no, uh, you just have to change your perspective and you have to look for a job that meets the goals that you have and that you have only. I found this job out of Phoenix. I went on Craigslist and I was looking for a few things and this company checked all the boxes. I didn't, I didn't really go looking for a company that didn't run the Rockies, but they don't run the Rockies. So that's best. That's better for me. And you can find plenty of companies that don't run the Rockies. There's so many companies out of Phoenix that literally just go Midwest and back, Chicago and back, Chicago and back, New York and back, Carolinas and back. That's all they do. We run reefer. We run groceries. That's what we do. Lots of companies out of the Phoenix area that do that. Phoenix is big for big, big for reefer. Phoenix is big for reefer and they're starting to become really big for dry van because we're building all, well, not we are building, you know what I mean? They are building all those warehouses in the Phoenix area. They are taking over the Inland Empire. Riverside, San Bernardino, all that. No, nah, man, we are taking over. And, and I believe that a lot of that freight is going to be going to be dumped in the Phoenix area because of the emissions, truck emissions mandates, right? If they really want every truck in the state of California to be electric, then they're going to have to figure out a nice, efficient way to grab all that stuff. Everything that's produced in California will need to be dumped at the border, either in Phoenix or Vegas, right? Phoenix or Vegas, everything that comes off those ships, comes off those port ships are going to have to be dumped at the border with an electric truck, right? And then picked up by a diesel truck and ran the rest of the way through the country. I think that's where it's going because listen, there are billions of dollars being spent on warehouses. They started during uh, the pandemic lockdown. They started building then and they have not stopped. They slowed down a little bit last year, but this year they're back up to business as usual. They are pumping these distribution warehouses out like nobody's business. And listen, if people that do risk management and research, uh, when it goes into spending a billion dollars or, or, you know, $300 million at a time, if they're still building in Phoenix, they believe as I believe that Phoenix is going to be the next hotspot. And the reason I believe that is because I'm watching the writing on the wall with California and all the regulations and how they're trying to push electric trucks and electric vehicles out there. So anyway, my point is Augustine, I'm not saying you should get back in trucking. I'm saying you should do whatever makes you happy, but you have to balance that with what gives you enough money to live right now. Obviously, you don't need as much money as I need. Number one, I got another 30 something thousand dollars in debt I gotta pay off. Number two, I've got two vehicles and then the girl I live with has two vehicles and then we have a daughter, a, th a 13 year old daughter and uh, and we also pay for rent in bougie ass surprise. Well, actually, it could be a lot more bougier than surprise, trust me. There's more expensive areas but surprise was definitely a a step up from Kingman. Uh, I loved Kingman. I loved the cost of living in Kingman. It's just that there wasn't a whole lot out there. Um, the, the daughter had a situation where she had to be rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery and they couldn't help her. And they actually misdiagnosed her there because they're not used to dealing with children. And she had to get uh, rushed to Vegas to get surgery. So she lived, everything was good, but she could have well, very well died. And that was one of the things that made me leave a small town. Now I would love to live in it. There's a small town by Phoenix that I love to live with that has acreage for cheap and you could go out there and get cheap land. And, but it's within 30, 40 minutes of the Phoenix metro area. So you have all the amenities that you might need, right? So getting back to what I'm saying, Augustine, I understand your point. I understand your point about a lot of people make more money than I do hourly, but they can't touch what I make weekly. When you look at how much I make weekly, they can't touch what I make. When you look at what I make yearly, they can't touch what I make, right? Now, I will do a whole nother video because this video is already 40 minutes long and it's way too long. We're gonna do another video in the future where I break down the skill set because 
What you're forgetting, uh, I'll, I'll give you a brief summary of it right now and then maybe I'll do a video later about it, a longer video, but let me just break it down real quick. Augustine, something you're forgetting to uh, point out to yourself, because don't lie to yourself, that's the worst person you can lie to is yourself. And you're also not pointing it out to everybody that's listening to you that you're trying to convince that trucking is not worth it. Tell me another job where you could get four weeks of training. After your four weeks of training, get one year of experience. And in your second week on or your second year on the job, year number two on your new job, you're gonna make 80K. Where, what else are you going to do that with? Okay. Where, what are you going to do? Because if there was something else, I did a lot of research before I got into trucking. If there was something else I could have done with four weeks of training and then get paid a decent wage for my first year of experience, because listen, although I was running with a mega carrier my first year, my first four months I ran with the mega carrier. Yeah, I only made between six to $800 a week. But then I quit and I got a, a another, see, this is another way you could go about doing it too. This is the way I did it. After four months of trucking, well, after six months of trucking, cause I had a flatbed job too. After about six months of trucking, and not making a whole lot of money and then the pandemic hit and I didn't like the way I was being treated during the lockdown with the restaurants being closed and all that bullshit. I quit trucking for five months and became an auto mechanic back in Vegas. And then as soon as my 12 month mark was up, I started calling local small mom and pop companies out of the Las Vegas area on Craigslist that said 12, license must be 12 years old must be a CDL holder for 12 months. And there are ones that say that. They don't necessarily say you they, you need 12 months of experience. And if they do, they're not gonna check that you have 12 months of experience. Now, I would not suggest going out and running hard for one of these companies if you're not confident in driving. But that's another way you can go about it. Because many, many companies just wanna put a driver in the seat and they don't care whether you really have a full 12 months of experience. As long as your license is 12 months old, that insurance company is going to insure you. It's up to the trucking company to verify whether you have 12 months of experience or not. So to make a long story short, I searched high and low for a job that was not only going to, I was going to be able to train in four weeks, but then I was going to be able to make $800 a week in the beginning while I got my experience. Cause we all knew, we all know you need to get that 12 months of experience at least. Now it's more like two years before you can start getting those higher paying jobs or those local jobs, right? The good local jobs. Well, um, there was no, I, I, I couldn't personally find anything else that piqued my interest that I thought I would be good at that allowed me to get four weeks of training, get a license, and then put 12 months of work in and then get a job that gave me 80K. There was nothing. I don't know what else you, unless you're a hot young chick and you can become an OnlyFans model, nothing else is gonna, or a hot young dude and become OnlyFans model. How else are you gonna make that kind of money with that kind of experience and that kind of training, that low level, that's, that small amount of time of training? where now obviously there's different situations for different people okay maybe uncle bobby's wife's brother's sister's dad owns a welding company and he's willing to let you get on the job training and you're going to wind up making 800 dollars a week for him while he trains you for six months and then after after he teaches you all the fundamentals of welding then maybe he's going to put you to work at that six month mark and you're going to make 12 or 1500 or 1800 a week. That's a different situation. That is not the norm. See, the cool thing about trucking is anybody can get in this seat, go to school for four weeks, get a license, 
drive for 12 months, apply for a second job, and jump their income up crazy. Crazy. And that's what it's all about for a lot of people. It's about the income. You guys wanna see the girl? The girl that was dressed all nice? Ah, ah! Sorry, I screwed that up, didn't I? I hope you guys saw her. Anyway, he was dressed really nice too, man. He was sporting some... Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. Those aren't truckers. Because he was dressed really, really nice like a cowboy also. And now that the, this other dry van moved out of my way, I could see that they're in... They might be in some kind of like horse racing trailer. That's what they're pulling. So I bet you if this other truck moves, I'm going to see that they are in a in a uh, pickup truck. But yeah, they're not truckers. Damn it. I was like, those are some good looking truckers. No, I think they're horse racing people. I don't know. When they move their truck, I'll see. For all I know, it could be a race. They... I can't tell if it's a horse racing operation or if it's a a race a race operation like dirt bikes or or race cars. Anyway, yeah, man, four weeks of training, twelve months of experience. Getting back to what I was saying, Augustine, is it's all about chasing dreams, right? Everything is about chasing dreams. I agree with you. I agree with you. Listen, my junk removal company, I passed out about two hundred and fifty business cards. And I did about uh, nine jobs, nine jobs. And this is in a, uh, about a six week period. In a six week period, in the beginning of the winter 2022, the beginning of the winter 2022 in Kingman, Arizona, only a town of 45,000 people, I started a junk removal company. I passed out 250 cards. I did, I did, uh, nine, about nine jobs. I'd have to go back and look at my pad and see what I wrote down. Nine jobs. Now I have not passed out a business card in, uh, October, November, December, January, February, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have not passed out a business card in 12, 13, 14, 16 months, 16 months. And I still get one call per month. One call per month, people want me to come, asking me if I can come do junk removal. I haven't done a junk job since March of last year. So uh, 11 months ago was the last time I did a junk job in Kingman, Arizona. I'm still getting calls from people I did junk jobs for 11 or 12 months ago, right? So I understand the dream. And remember, junk removal is a hell of a lot more profit margin than trucking is, okay? The only good thing about trucking is you put a truck, even if I own the truck, you put a truck and trailer on the road and you get on the load board or you call a bunch of carriers that need freight that's moved and you're making money from, from week one. From day one that that truck's on the road, you are making money. You are bringing in gross revenue, gross revenue. Now, that is not the case for most of our dreams. Most of us want to do a pressure washing company, a junk removal company, a pet sitting company, um, a construction company, a painting company. And unfortunately, those traditional businesses take months to get off the ground. Months, if not years. I personally, I personally started uh, passing out business cards for junk removal on a Wednesday and on Saturday, that same Saturday, two days later, three days later, I got two jobs in one day and made 600 bucks. 600, uh, I think I, I think I grossed, uh, 640, 640 or 650 gross 640 or 650 my very first Saturday. So, but, but I'm kind of, I'm a hustler, man. I'm a grinder. Like I don't, I walk into everywhere, real estate agents, construction places, uh, uh, property management places. I pass my business card out to people at red lights, uh, stopped at a stop sign. So, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a different cat, but my point I'm getting at is I understand the dream Ramos, Mr. Ramos. I understand the dream and I understand how grimy and nasty this trucking lifestyle supposedly is. I understand that trucking is a tool to pay off debt. 
This is the thing that annoys me about you, Augustine. Trucking was perfect for you to pay off debt. But as soon as you didn't feel like you could save any money because you're only making 600, 500, $600 a week, as soon as that happened to you, trucking was trash. So it was, it, it was good as long as they were just handing you the money to pay off your debt with. But then you paid off all your debt and then the money started going down and instead of you searching for another way to get more money out of trucking, I'm not gonna say you gave up. I'm gonna say you blamed everything on trucking. You blamed everything on OTR trucking and how these companies treat us and how much they pay us per hour. Well, I understand your frustration and I understand getting caught in a snowstorm when you're trying to earn money and you're not only are you not earning money, but you're risking your life every day for a company that ain't paying you shit. I understand what that's like. That's one of the reasons I quit twice. I quit during the pandemic for five months and I quit in uh, summer of 2022 for five months. I took breaks. I understand. But then I said, wait a minute. There are so many people in trucking, driving nice trucks, driving nice cars, uh, buying houses. They have jet skis. They have boats. I've met, I've met other people in trucking. I've met people in trucking that work. I've met a guy in trucking that worked for Crete for 19 years. Crete Schaefer for 19 years. That dude showed me his Charles Schwab account. He showed me his Charles Schwab account investment account this dude had 1.7 million dollars in it 1.7 million dollars in his charles schwab account but i'll tell you what he was driving an old 90s chevy that was beat to shit i think it was 1.7 million 1.7 million about yeah yeah yeah, because it was, it was definitely under $2 million. But he was driving an old beat up 90s Chevy truck. You would have never known. And then I started thinking. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How are all these other people making it so big in trucking? So then I started looking into hazmat. And I realized, well, hazmat guys don't make a whole lot of money if it's just hazmat. They make more money, don't get me wrong. And I was like, let me look at car hauling. Let me look at flatbed. Let me look at low boy, right? And I realized it wasn't necessarily that one trucker was making crazy amounts of money than another trucker. Except for mega carrier running low miles, like 2,300 miles a week compared to everybody else. If you're a mega carrier driver running 22 to 2,400 miles a week, yeah, you ain't making shit. But if you're if you're not working for a mega carrier or you've been working for a mega carrier for 15 years, you're making a lot of money, right? Or you're making a lot more money. You're making up in the, the $1,800 to the $2,200 a week range, right? So uh, anyway, to make a long story short, I started doing a lot of research and I'm like, wait a minute, if all these people could do all this in trucking, I just have to figure out how I need to go about making it like this in trucking. And the first thing you got to do is you got to change your mindset. I used to look at all the time I spent in the truck also. And I used to get frustrated just like you, Augustine, just like you. But then I started changing my mindset just to like, like I just told you, what do I need to do in my hometown to make $1,800 a week? I have to deliver 16 stops on a Cisco trailer or a Martin Brower trailer for McDonald's or a Tyson trailer or a U.S. Foods trailer. Um, I got to take uh, orders from other people all day long. I have to work 14 hours a day, six days a week. You know, those are the things you got to do locally to, or you got to have a hazmat, which I don't have yet, you know, but 
Or you got to join a union, which isn't great for a guy like me because I have a lot of bills and I can't afford to go part-time with the union for even three months. Because of my bills, which are my fault, don't get me wrong, I know that my lifestyle, I mean, my monthly bills aren't that crazy if you take away my debt. If you take away my debt, I could take a 30 or a 40% pay cut, believe it or not, and be okay. So in my situation at the moment, a union job is not for me either. So yeah, a union job, sorry, I got a call. A union job is not for me. Oh, yep, horse trailer. Hold on, hold on. Yep. The bougie people, the good looking people are in a, looks like a competitive horse trailer. And they've been on that fuel island for probably 30 minutes. Your break's over. Your break's over, cowboy. Let's go. All right, back to what I was saying. I got to wrap this up. This is one hell of a video. I hope you guys had had a, a nice, enjoyable time listening to me. But thanks for subscribing too. Don't forget to hit the, the notification bell. But at least hit the subscribe bell and hit that like button. Do me a favor. I need all people to hit the like button so the algorithm will love me. So that's the point I'm getting at here is I was in your boat, Augustine. I was in your ship. I wanted to be a full-time junk removal slash YouTuber. My last channel, which was also called Tommy Unfiltered, and this channel, which I'm not going to delete this one. I might take a break from it from time to time, but I won't delete it. It's a, supposed to be a podcast. It's a, supposed to be an interview show. I would love to interview people. I would love to interview people, but I don't have the time to interview people. I love people's stories. I love people's perspectives, but obviously running OTR, I don't have time to interview people. So, but that's the ultimate goal. My ultimate goal was always to, to for years, I've been planning on building a junk removal company for years. And I finally got, a trailer. I built up a trailer. I put metal walls on it. It's like a dumpster trailer. Um, a few months back, I traded my Harley for a four wheel or I sold my Harley and I bought a four wheel drive truck that I needed to go with the trailer. So my business is pretty much just sitting idle waiting for me. All I got to do is, um, get a local city license. I had one in Kingman. I need to get one in surprise, Arizona. I need to get a local city license and I need to reactivate my insurance. That's all I got to do. Outlaw, and then I got to make new flyers and new business cards and get the word out, obviously. But other than that, I'm ready to go. My truck and trailer is sitting at the house. If I had five days off and, and I ran into somebody that needed something taken to the dump right now, I would do it right now. Right now. When I get home next week on Monday, I only have half a day off next week. But if I had two, three days off and I seen a big pile of shit somewhere, I would ask them. Hey, you want to pay me to run that to the dump? But you got to understand something, people that listen to Augustine and Augustine yourself. Listen, coming from somebody that start, started and, and closed down four or five jobs in the last, or businesses in the last six years. If you have any bills. Now, Augustine, this night, this might not apply to you. Because you have a place to live, I'm assuming for free, and you have very low bills. But if you have a household to support while you're trying to start a business, it doesn't work. It's very, very, very hard to do. Because you got to work a full-time job to pay the bills, and then you got to try to hustle on the side. Now, as soon as my debt is paid, I could, if I wanted to, get a local job that covered all my household bills and then start grinding on the junk removal company at night and on the weekends, most likely on the weekends. Cause I'd probably be working 10 hours a day at my job to make the money I need to support my household. But I could do that. And that was the original plan. That was the original plan was to get in this truck for this company, pay off my debt, and then as soon as the debt was paid off, get a local job that covers the household bills and then grind on the weekends for the junk removal company for like three years until the junk removal company is self-sufficient or efficient enough for me to make a living off of it. And then I was going to quit my local job. 
But then this job, I'm not going to call it easy, but it's so easy in the sense that I know where I'm going. I go to the same places all the time. My bosses are chill, cool. My bosses fix the truck, keep the truck on the road. Everybody's easy to work with. If I need time off, I get time off. I might stay in this truck for three to five years. Total, not from now. That means I've already been in this truck for one year. Next month will be one year. So two to four more years, two to four more years. Now here's another thing I'm thinking about. I'm probably going to be team driving a semi truck with my child's mother. Yes, she got her CDL. Um, and yes, she's probably going to come team drive with me. And if that's the case, if we could live together for that long in a small truck and we really do efficiently run the truck together and find that it's, it's better financially to run together, then yes, we might stay in this truck for three to five years, maybe. And in that case, the goal would be to save so much money in the bank that when we come off the road, I will not have to get a local job at all. She'll get a local job, but I will not have to get a local job at all. I will have so much money in the bank that I could just go hardcore 40, 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week into junk removal. And that would give me a much better chance of that business succeeding and flourishing and becoming profitable quickly, right? So that's really all I have to say. This video went on way too long, but I hope you guys got some value out of it. Trucking, if you don't like trucking as a lifestyle, which many of us don't, use trucking as a tool. Get the money you need to do what you want to do. That's all I'm saying. That, that's, that's all this video is about. Because without the skill, because remember, in this video, I'm not talking about plumbers or electricians or people that can join the union. Like if you can afford to, to not make any money for three to six months, go join the union in your area and get a union trucking job and you don't have to deal with all this over the road stuff. And yes, you will get paid every hour that you're on the clock. You will get paid for breakdowns. You will get hotel rooms and all that stuff. Great. But not everybody could come off the road and get a union job. Depends on the market you're in. So I'm not talking about all that. I'm comparing this job and this skill set and this credential to any other run of the mill bullshit job you will go get when you come off the road. Now, Augustine Ramos is very good at what he does. He's good at triggering people. He's good at trolling people. And when he says the guy at Walmart makes more than that over the road trucker does, yes, it's a play on words. It is a play on words, but he is right. Almost everybody makes more per hour than an over the road trucker. When you count every hour we spend in this truck. Thanks for joining the show today. Subscribe to the channel, please.